comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. All right, where are we at? I'm still on the trundle behind the couch at fucking John Dawes Hovel. I've almost lost all memory of my family and I got attacked by a bird today while I was eating a sandwich. This little fucking Indian minor bird. The fucking balls on this little fucking bird. This is like hipster town as well where I'm staying. So the birds have no natural enemies around here, so they're brazen as fuck. And this little cunt just flew up and tried to steal my sandwich out of my hand twice. Straight out of my hand while I'm sitting there fucking pissed off that I even bought the sandwich because I had just eaten lunch and I thought I'd go for a backup sandwich. I was the tiniest little bit still hungry. After I ate lunch and I was walking past this sandwich shop and the sandwiches looked good. So I was like, fuck it, I'm getting a sandwich. And then when it came out, it was a little bit too big for me. I still finished it, of course, but I knew first bite in that I'd made a big mistake. So I'm sitting there going, fucking hell, this is fucking ridiculous. I can't eat this fucking thing. And so I was eating it and in between bites while I was trying to catch my breath to take another bite, this fucking little fucking bird comes up, flies up, and tries to snatch it out of my hand. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I might be too fucking full to eat this, but you're getting none of it, cunt. You're getting no fucking crumbs, cunt. (laughs) I was so angry at this fucking bird. You know that fucking type? I think they're called Indian miners. They've got the fucking yellow beaks. They're a pest to every cunt. That's why they name them Indian miners, because they're just fucking pests. There's too many of them. So this fucking brazen cunt of a bird, he didn't even fly off. I fucking went to kick it as well, but he dodged it. I'm like, if you fucking try that again, bird, you're in big fucking shit here. And he didn't fly off. He stayed lurking, and I kept my eye on him, because I knew he was going to make another move. I fucking could tell. I could read that fucking little fuck's mind. Have I started swearing even more since I got back to Australia? <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I feel like every second word out of my mouth now is fuck or cunt. This fucking little fucking cunt fuck. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've really ramped up the swearing. Anyway, I'm keeping a fucking eye on this little fuck. But then I took like the second last bite of my sandwich and I was like full. I was dizzy. I was like a little bit sweaty. I'd just eaten two big meals and I still had the last bite in my hand, but I'd let my guard down because I was trying to fucking swallow the bite before. And as soon as I let my guard down, this fucking bird swoops again, takes off, boom, gets hold of my little bit of sandwich. It was only like half a bite left. Gets it fucking fully in its mouth and I'm like wrestling it. It's flapping, I'm wrestling it, and I fucking rip it out of its mouth and quickly throw it in my mouth. I'm like, ha ha, fuck you, bird. Fuck you, disease-ridden bird that just had my fucking sandwich fully in its mouth. The same bit of sandwich I then fully put in my mouth. You're not going to be fucking beating boil in a sandwich eating contest. I can tell you that right now, you little cunt. But these fucking birds are brazen around here. Because it's all hipsters. Well, it's meth heads and hipsters, but meth heads have very little to do with birds. Because meth heads don't really eat that often, so they don't really get an opportunity to build, like, relationships with the local birds. But the hipsters, they're at cafes constantly. And instead of kicking these fucking birds in the head, they feed these birds and think they're fucking cute. And that just emboldens these little fucks. And the next thing you know, you're sitting at a fucking restaurant and you can't enjoy your meal because you're at war with a fucking bird. A fucking bird that won't leave you alone, that thinks your property's its property. If I lived around here, I'd carry a tennis racket around just to fuck these birds up. Teach them a fucking thing or two about the fucking food chain. These things have more balls than pigeons. Anyway... It's fucking Friday again. Hasn't that spun around quickly? I suppose the days go a little bit quicker when you're waking up at 11 a.m. Anyway, it's Friday, so it's time for this week's Fucked Up Friday. If you have a story, a fucking banger you want to send in to be read out on the podcast, 
send it in to my website, boilcomedy.com. There's a fucked up Friday section there. While you're there, sign up for the Patreon, support the podcast. The link to the Patreon's on the website. Everything's on the website. Tickets to my shows are on the website. Have a look around. It's boilcomedy.com. Anyway, let's get to this week's Fucked Up Friday. So this week's Fucked Up Friday is from Ireland. And this pussy wants to remain anonymous. So let's get to it. A couple of years ago, I was in college doing a semester abroad in Copenhagen. The semester was starting at the end of January. So I had a couple of weeks between Christmas and then to say my goodbyes in Ireland. Or in other words get blackout drunk four nights a week and burn bridges with people. (laughs) I don't remember much from the two weeks except for one night I was at an afters. You're talking about an after party, yeah? Yep. The type of afters where you're at risk of catching scabies or some other crusty disease. Something didn't feel right. It was like the air was mank and the place stunk too. Anyways, about a week later, I had arrived in Copenhagen and it was a Friday. It was my first proper night out over there with all these new people, so I did what felt natural. I drove it on to Barbaric Excess. At the bar, I got talking to a Scottish girl who at the time I thought looked alright, but it turned out the beer goggles were in full swing. That's one of the best parts about drinking is turning fours and fives into eights and nines. Including yourself, fucking turning yourself from a four to a fucking eight. We left together and tried getting the metro back to hers. On the way to the metro, she started screaming at this fellow across the street coming out of Burger King. It happened to be a flatmate. His name was Matt. Myself and Matt did not get on. (laughs) Who ever gets on with some fucking chick's housemate? Especially some fucking dude named Matt. Matt's probably put in fucking some serious work and got no twang at all out of it. And here you are, you're about to get some fucking action with no fucking effort at all. So me and Matt did not get on, mainly because I was being an ob- <laughs> mainly because I was being an obnoxious cunt. I kept calling him Marty, and I remember him fucking hating it. I used to do that all the time for my own amusement. Just call someone some other name. Hey, Pete, come over here. My name's not Pete, it's Chris. Shut up, Pete, come on. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Pete. It's it's Chris. Pete, if I have to fucking tell you to come over here again, I'm going to really start getting fucking angry. The more they try and fucking tell you what their name is, the more angry you should get. Pete, shut up. We're trying to have a fucking civilized conversation over here. Now get. God, those days were fun. Anyway. Kept calling him Marty and he was fucking hating it. It also turned out he had been banging the Scottish one, so there was a bit of jealousy at play. Ah, he was banging her, of course. His night's over as well. He just walked out of Burger King. He was probably hoping to fucking go back home and give this fucking Scottish girl a fucking round. So in the metro station, we hadn't a clue which line to get. But we remembered there was a taxi parked above the metro, so we ran up the escalator to get it. This is where shit took a turn. I fucking lamped myself on the escalator and sliced my knee open pretty bad. Luckily, the two were ahead of me and didn't see how bad the fall was. I was also wearing black jeans, which masked all the blood. To be honest, I didn't even think it was that bad. I probably should have taken the hint in the taxi when my hand was red from blood leaking through my jeans, but I was too busy taking the piss out of Marty and talking bollocks to your one. We made it to the flat and at this point I was carrying a pretty bad limp. I sat on the Scottish girl's bed and while she was in the bathroom, I took my jeans off to assess the damage. I shit you not, it looked like a fucking rock wheeler had taken a bite out of my knee. I immediately froze. She came in and straight away started screaming, Matt, Matt, get in here. We need the first aid kit. Fair play to Marty. <laughs> Fair play to Marty. He actually came in and bandaged me up. Did a pretty good job too. I'll spare you the details of what happened next. Thank you very much. The listeners will be very happy with that. But let's just say it wasn't my best performance to date. So you, <laughs> so you bottled the root. 
Anyways, I woke up the following morning and instead of my knee hurting, it was my face. It felt like Tyson Fury had broken my jaw in two places and my cheeks were burning up too. Your one was still asleep, so I got up and hobbled into the bathroom to look in the mirror. My face was so swollen, it looked like I'd put on 200 pounds. I had got the fucking mumps. Turned out I had picked it up at the Scaldi after sesh back home and the symptoms were only just kicking in now. Bollocks. I put my clothes on, said nothing and got the fuck out of there. Literally the Irish goodbye. I typed doctor into my phone and found a spot that was 20 minutes walk away. I limped the whole way there with my gammy knee and swollen face looking like a fucking elephant man on a busy Saturday morning. Students everywhere, fit ones too. Even the doctor laughed at me. To be fair to him, he did a spot on job with the knee. As for the mumps, he hadn't a clue what the story was. Mumps is pretty unheard of over there, so he ended up feeling my testicles for some reason. (laughs) He ended up feeling my testicles for some reason and gave me 100 paracetamol and 100 ibuprofen. Pretty sound of him. Why did he feel your balls and why did you let him? All right, that's four stitches in your knee. Now all I need you to do is just whip out your balls, mate, or just give them a little uh, examine and you should be good to go. But uh, why do you just get them out, son? Both of them? (laughs) Fucking doctors. This is actually sexual assault. Anyway, two years later, my knee still opens up from time to time and I never saw the Scottish girl again. Marty, on the other hand, only accepted my friend request on Facebook a week ago. You win some, you lose some. Why are you Facebook friends with Marty again? In hindsight, we probably did need the details of you banging the Scottish girl just to fucking take that story a little bit to the next level. A little bit of fucking Scotland and Ireland rubbing together. You know what I mean? Anyway, thanks for the story. Thanks for sending it in. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you the fuck later.